I'm Brooks Patrick. I've met most of you guys um, yesterday during our workshops. I'm also here with Lisa um, Staley from our Zurich R&D Center. And what we're going to do is take you through a new tool that we've been developing called Arctis Urban. And really to start with, I just want to frame why we're even at this scale and, and what are the challenges really that we're up against. And really, if you've been to any major city recently, you've noticed that there's massive change happening. Um, there are transactions happening on the city, um, mainly due to real estate development and a uh, good market, uh, but also the capital investments going into infrastructure to support this type of development. And what we've realized um, with all of this expenditure, that there's not one holistic view of the city as a base model that can be um, really looked at in terms of an evaluation tool to understand if we should move forward or not with certain projects. Um, we see that there are key actors that work within this um, realm, from government um, to the citizens who have a stake in uh, the decision making, to real estate um, looking for um, the best place to actually build, to architecture, engineering, construction, which are usually working on behalf of real estate, behalf of citizens, and behalf of the government as, as that glue, as that consultant glue between them. So in 2019, some of the challenges that we see are you know, the lack of having a, a view of active development, but also this reliance on developer illustrations, uh, which many times causes some friction with these groups. There's also highly manual processes for specific area plans, um, which go into modeling the constraints from which development can occur. And we need to be able to portray reports and communicate sometimes very complex um, uh, information to the public um, that many times we rely too heavily on, on paper and, and printouts to do. And we want to basically marry that with a more digital means of collaborating with, with citizens um, in the process. So what we've developed is Arctis Urban, which is really a, a, a tool that will bring together and provide that holistic view um, on the city, but also the tools in which you can uh, manipulate uh, the underlying constraints um, that have to do with whether projects and plans can even occur. Um, Arctis Urban is going to be focused on being web-based and simple, and as some of you have tested out yesterday, um, hopefully fun to use. Um, a lot of our tools are, are let's say, um, data-driven, and we want to bring the sketch and the actual design mode into geographic context um, with this web-based tool. It's inherently 3D, and as you'll see shortly from Lisa, these tools are, are also going to be um, inherently 3D. Um, City of Melbourne is one of our early adopters, and they're using this tool to basically bring together about 200 or so um, architectural models. Um, they come in different formats, Revit, BIM uh, generally, um, but really it offers them a place to bring all those models together so that they can actually have a, a view of all of these large capital flows across the city. Uh, with the City of uh, Boston, uh, actually the Boston Planning Development Agency, um, they're in charge of planning and economic development, so they're actually looking at it as a tool for managing the, the zoning constraints within certain neighborhoods of the city. As we start to investigate, for example, old industrial use corridors and how they could be um, redeveloped um, to offer more uh, housing opportunities uh, throughout the city, and really to understand how, it, how the metrics involved with housing uh, meet with the uh, actual form that that uh, might take in the city. Uh, with the city of San Francisco, actually Scott presented here um, last year uh, about their growth capacity analysis. And it's really a tool that we've developed to not only take and create plans and understand what's being built and where, but also the underlying data that goes into factoring whether we need to even look at certain neighborhoods over another. And so what you're seeing here is the growth capacity uh, for downtown San Francisco. And typically, GIS implementations require desktop software, and so by going to the web browser with a lot of these tools, we really look to kind of get over a lot of the hurdles um, to getting these types of tools in the hands of the practitioners. And then finally, uh, the idea generation component is something we've been working on with the city of Zurich to basically enable this as a, a platform for uh, not only 311, but just general ideas about um, what we should do um, and what we should prioritize throughout the city. Um, and the city of Zurich, I mean, they're looking at how they can basically get over the reliance on PDFs and printouts and also offer that uh, uh, supportive means of communication on the web. 
So ArcGIS Urban, as you'll see from Lisa, it's a tool that basically ties in a lot of different components of our platform, including GeoPlanner, from the regional scale down to the city scale, and then further into urban design uh, use within City Engine. And when I talk about urban, it's also the means from which we can start discussions around plans and projects with other uh, tools like ArcGIS Hub. Uh, so you'll probably learn a lot about all of these throughout the week, um, but rather than me going through any more slides, I'm going to hand it over to Lisa to give you a quick demonstration of ArcGIS Urban. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much, Brooks. I'm having trouble with the AC. Um, here, so this is why my voice is a little <laughs> um, strange today. So um, I'm happy to show you our latest alpha version of ArcGIS Urban. So this software has not been released yet. And um, I'm actually one of the developers that tries to make this software fun, as um, Brooks um, already said later on. So uh, what you see here is um, a 3D model of the city of um, San Francisco. And I'm just going to zoom right into um, downtown here, where we have um, all those iconic buildings. And I have actually wanted to show you another type of visualization that you can also see in Artis Urban. So I'm just going to go in here and go to our satellite 3D base map. There we go. And I'm going to turn on not only our imagery below, but also San Francisco actually has very nice textured 3D buildings that you're able to see here. And we're not only seeing the textured buildings, but you also notice all those colorful buildings, the colored pins. Those are all the plans and projects that um, we have captured here for the city. So let me dive into one of our four Arches Urban Elements. We call them here up in uh, the top left corner. And one of them is the projects. And projects are those um, short-term construction projects that the city wants to show to the public. So I'm just going to go in and open here the Chase Center Arena, which will be built uh, in San Francisco for the Golden State um, Warriors. So here you see a 3D model. This um, building is actually under construction, and I brought this building in through City Engine to be visualized here in Arches Urban for the public to see already how it's going to look in the future. The second Arches Urban element are plans. And when I go here on to plans, I see that on my map, I see all the plans popping up with those little pen um, icons. And I see that here in the, um, in the neighborhood of the Change Center Arena, there's actually a development plan going on, the Mission Bay plan, that we've also used yesterday in the workshop for those that attended. And I made a little um, demo here myself with Arches Urban, where I developed this area um, that, as you can see, doesn't have a lot of existing buildings um, already, so there's a high chance of development for the future. And I can also create multiple different scenarios. So let me um, switch through a couple of um, examples here um, that we've also seen yesterday in the workshop. And here with the scenario switcher, I can quickly go through different types of scenarios and see the underlying indicators that we calculated in urban right away. So I can also um, present this to the public. But uh, you might wonder how this did um, how did I create that in Arches Urban? So let me dive into our designer mode. <clears throat> and I'm going to just quickly open the dashboard here on the side. And you can see that my blue buildings from before, they now actually um, turn colorful. What I can see here is um, the space use of those buildings. So in blue, I can see um, this is the, um, all of the office spaces in this plan. In yellow, I can see, for example, residential um, units. And what it gives me here on the side as well with this dashboard are those indicators that we calculate based on the space use types. Now I can, of course, go in and I see here already on the side that I haven't reached my targets yet. So I might go in and select one of those buildings and um, change the underlying building type with it. So here I have a mid-rise office, and I want to transform that into a um, high-rise residential building. And I'll let my tool run and um, create me a new building, and I'll also see that in the dashboard, those values will update with the new building created. 
There you go. And now I see that I reached my targets both for population and households. I still have to work on the job section, um, but that's um, okay for me now. What I also wanted to show quickly is that we can also can, um, visually compare that to the underlying zoning envelopes. So actually, when I turn on my zoning envelope, what I can see here is that there would be more capacity based on what I defined on the underlying zoning for that building. So I could even build more floors um, regarding the zoning in this area. With this, let me go back to the overview and dive into our third um, type of Arches urban element, which are indicators. So we have two types of indicators right now in this um, version. One has already been shown by Brooks before, which, is the, um, which are indicators that we've calculated and visualized based on living atlas data. So this is actually US census data that you see here, um, this population change with the green bars being um, areas that have um, grown on population and the, yellow, the orange or yellow ones that have actually lost population over the years. But I can also add my own custom indicators. And in this case, I found an interesting data set about pedestrian density and also pedestrian injuries in the city of San Francisco. And I can see here, when I zoom out a little bit, and I'm actually going to turn back to the schematic view so that there's not so many colors on the screen. So you can see here, one, the, th the 2D map shows the density of pedestrians, and it makes sense that in this area here in downtown that we have higher density for pedestrians that also more injuries occur. So this is quantitative data that has been captured at intersections, how many pedestrians have been injured. This is for the year 2013. So we often have those statistical data only for um, past times, which can be a problem because we might want to react to real time what is going on. So what better could we do than actually ask the people living in the city about what is the real-time experience of San Francisco? This brings me to the fourth Arches urban element, which are our ideas. Ideas are comments that citizens can um, add to the city, as Brooks mentioned before. And here I see my comments in the 3D view, and when I click on this one here, I can see that someone commented that this is a very dangerous intersection and that the person has witnessed at least three almost fatal accidents here with pedestrians. Um, this is an imaginary case, but as Jack mentioned, the city is really, it can feel really dangerous. And this kind of um, information cannot be captured by any sensor. I mean, not even the smartest sensor can, can really nicely capture um, an almost accident for pedestrians, but it can leave people with um, this kind of feeling of, this is a scary intersection, um, but where is a place where I could put that? So this is um, our way to um, give citizens a platform to give feedback about their city, not only uh, quantitatively, but also qualitatively. And now uh, we come to the last part, which is about how can we actually share this and show this information to the citizens. We have um, this version of Arches Urban can be very easily embedded in any existing website that a city already has. So now if I go here in my settings, I go to the sharing, I see that there's um, some HTML code, and you might not be a developer, but I tell you that this can just be copied and be inserted into an existing website. And I did that. I hacked around a bit with the planning department uh, website of San Francisco that looks like that normally. So it has this 2D map where I can search for planning applications. And I just inserted Arches Urban here. So it's the same website. Don't worry, it's just a mock-up. Um, but I inserted Arches Urban here, and I can explore in 3D um, what are the projects that are going to come up in the future. And I can also search for a project if I know about something where I, for example, want to see my detailed 3D model, as in the case of the Chase Center Arena. I can zoom to that area, and I can see that this 3D model that uh, I have made available for the public through Arches Urban is also in here and can be seen by the public. And 
that's it from my side. I'd like to hand over to Brooks for the final. Just a quick note that I'm also going to have a talk about the integration of Arches Urban and City Engine tomorrow morning if you want to come watch that. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. So, so in summary, what was just shown, and if I could summarize it, it's a view on active projects with tools to actually go under and manipulate the code, zoning code in that case, to basically model how development can even occur. And doing that all in an interactive environment. So I would just say we can't go into too much detail, so I'd like to invite everyone to a webinar um, in, a coming, in a couple more weeks, um, just to go into more detail about basically how to take a zoning code, for example, like San Francisco's, and put it into overlays and, and, uh, and zoning types. Um, we're also going to be at the APA, so folks here are probably around in California. Um, it's going to be in San Francisco this year, and we're also going to be doing some hands-on training if you missed uh, yesterday's workshop. So. Thank you.